Hi, I'm Roger Naylor. I'm the senior pastor at First Baptist Church of Bonners Ferry, Idaho, and I want to welcome you to this week's Midweek Reboot. Um, this is the third installment of our online uh, midweek service, and uh, it's just a time to spend in prayer and uh, spend uh, some time in God's Word. And uh, as you look around, you probably can see already that I'm not in my normal setting. Uh, normally I do the midweek reboot from my office back at the church, uh, but tonight I decided to come out and uh, get out in nature and just enjoy the outdoors. And so I hope it blesses you to see beautiful North Idaho and Bonners Ferry behind me. Uh, it's just a beautiful place to live. And uh, I love the people here and I love this place. And so I want to welcome you again uh, to this week's uh, lesson. We're going to be in 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 4, but we're going to really focus on verse 3 as we continue the topic of obedience. Uh, last week we talked about and introduced this word obedience. And we know that this word obedience can, uh, you know, sometimes in the church setting particularly, come across as this list of do's and don'ts. I have to do these things to make God happy, and if I don't, he's gonna be upset with me, he's going to you know, kick me out of heaven, he's not gonna let me in to heaven, whatever it may be. And that's not what scripture teaches us, and we're gonna talk about that. But before we do, I certainly wanna spend some time in prayer. I wanna to continue to pray for our church family, and I wanna uh, continue to pray for our, our business folks, our our first responders, our leaders, our community uh, leaders, our business leaders, all of those, which is all of us really, who've been affected by this virus. And uh, I just wanna say thank you to you and, and I wanna pray for you. I also wanna pray for friends and family back east affected by the tornadoes and the bad weather. Um, and I just wanna pray for our governor and for the leadership in the next couple of weeks as they uh, make decisions to allow our, our communities and our nation really to get back to some normalcy. And, and uh, hopefully as a church, we'll be able to get back and fellowship in person uh, soon. We will certainly keep you updated uh, and let you know. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Open up with prayer and we'll get into our message tonight. Lord, we thank you for uh, God, the beautiful creation around us, that even while right now around the world there's a lot of chaos, there's uh, viruses, there's things going on, God, that can certainly strike fear in our hearts, but as believers, we look at this creation, we see you, we see a powerful and almighty creator the one who is the Redeemer, the one who has given us salvation, as we just talked about this Easter weekend, the one who rose from the grave, who has given us life, who has forgiven us of our sins. We, we give you all the glory and all the praise. And so we lift up these prayers to you. We ask you to work in each of these situations. And God, now we ask your spirit to go before us as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, like admitting last week that um, we need to be saved. We are sinners. Um, we are sinners by nature. We have a depraved heart. And the Bible tells us that while we were still sinners, Christ came and Christ died for us so that our sin could be paid for, so that our sin could be forgiven. And as we just talked about this weekend, Good Friday and Easter Sunday, we talked about what Jesus accomplished on the cross, his atonement, his death, a substitute for us. And we have to admit we need that. We need that for salvation. We, we couldn't do anything good enough to make God save us. It's by his grace through faith that we are saved. It's not by our works. And just like having to admit that, now that we're saved, he calls us to be obedient, to follow him faithfully. And we have to admit that we can't do that on our own. And what we're gonna learn in the text and learn from the message tonight is he has empowered us. He has given us something to help us live obedient lives and live every day with purpose. Because the reality is, if I try to live every day on my own, I'm gonna revert back to my self-righteousness and I'm gonna fail. Because see, it's God's righteousness that's gonna help me live obediently, not my self-righteousness, not my good works. It's what God has done for me. He's going to carry me. He's gonna help me because I can't do it on my own. 
it reminds me of um, many, many years ago when I was a very young father, my first child, my son was very young and that Christmas he got a swing set and, and that Christmas Eve I was going to put it together so it was ready for him the next day and, and uh, I got all the parts out, it was in this big box and I got all the parts out and laid them out and I began to rip open all the packages with all the nuts and bolts and screws in them and, and just put them in a pile and got everything ready and as I began to, to work I realized that not all the nuts and the bolts and the screws were the same. And I, I got a little concerned. I was like, well, what's wrong here? I don't, I don't understand. So I did what uh, every man really should do, and that is I went back to the instructions. I opened up those instructions, and I realized that every one of those packets were numbered, or maybe they were color-coded. I can't remember, but they, they were, there was a number or color code for each packet to go with each section of the swing set. I could have saved a lot of time if I'd have gone to those instructions first. Instead, my dad, who was there thankfully, uh, he helped me put them all back in the right packages so that we could figure out. Something that probably could have taken an hour, an hour and a half, took us about three or four hours because of my mistake. You know, our, our lives as Christians is somewhat like that. God has, has given us the ability to live for Him. And as we're, we'll see, he's even empowered us. Yet I think too often we don't take advantage of that. We don't recognize that or understand it. And instead we try to live our life on our own. And it's a mistake. As I said a moment ago, we're going to fall. And we're going to fall hard at times. And so our, our goal is let's trust God. He has saved us. And as we're going to see in this text, he has given us. Uh, the ability to live godly lives. Look with me at 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, but listen to verse 3 particularly. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What an amazing passage of scripture just like last week we learned the amazing truth that God saved us by his grace not by anything we could accomplish and as we see in this text he has given us divine power because of of us knowing him because of us being saved because of our relationship with him this afternoon I want us to see in this text that God has uh, done some amazing things to enable us to live obedient lives, to live lives with purpose. Um, if you look at verse three, uh, Peter tells readers that through knowing God, we have been given this divine power, this ability. He has enabled us to live godly lives. The moment we are saved, God gives us the power to live a life that glorifies him. Because as I said a moment ago, we couldn't do it on our own. We would begin to turn back to our own desires, our own selfish lust. Instead, God has enabled us to live for him and to glorify him in everything that we do. It's the only way we can be obedient to his word. And last week we learned that through salvation, that's what drives us. That's what leads us to want to be obedient is knowing that he saved us and made us new made us new creatures. And that's what he did. That's what happened through salvation. If you read uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says that we're new creatures in Christ. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Old things are gone, we're new. The Bible says we've been reborn, rebirthed. Now we still look the same, that didn't change, but it's what happened on the inside out. 
It's what God did in our hearts and in our minds. And he is, he is making us more and more like Christ every day. Every day he is doing that. What a beautiful thing. Later in Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, Paul says that believers are made complete in Christ. That is whole. We, we are made perfect in Christ and everything we need to be able to live out the life that God has set before us, he has given us because he has made us complete in Christ. And as we see in 2 Peter verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 3, we see that he has given us the divine power. I mean, we have, we have the divine nature of God with us. So when we were, we were saved, we were made new creatures. We were made new. There's something different about us. And God has given us all things, he says in that verse. We need to live godly lives even though we are imperfect creatures. We'll still mess up, but he has given us the ability to live for him. How does he do this? What has God done? What does the text tell us? Tells us? Well, here and in the rest of Scripture, we see in the New Testament that God has given us His Holy Spirit. We don't always talk about the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we forget the Holy Spirit's there. Um, we talk about Jesus a lot. We talk about God the Father a lot. But we have to understand that the Bible teaches us about the Trinity, God in three persons, that He is one God in three distinct persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And they each have different roles in our lives and, and in everything from creation to salvation. They all have distinct roles and the Holy Spirit has a distinct role and God has given us the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus said, I've got to go away when he was here on this earth. He says, I've got to go because you're going to have a helper, a counselor who's going to come alongside you and be with you. That's why Jesus could say at the end of Matthew, you know, go and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. How could he be with us always? Because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come and taken up residence and he's with us and he has responsibilities. He empowers us. He enables us to do the things we need to do. He gives us spiritual gifts to be able to accomplish what God has set before us. He seals us. Ephesians tells us, Paul tells us in, a, in the letter to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians that the Holy Spirit has sealed us to the day of redemption. He assures that our salvation is safe with him. What a beautiful truth that is. And so God has given us his spirit. He has saved us. He has given us his spirit. He has empowered us to be able to live lives that bring glory and honor to him. That's an amazing truth. William MacDonald, a theologian, he, he wrote this. He said, unlimited strength is at our disposal. Through the enabling of the Holy Spirit, the believer can serve valiantly, endure patiently, suffer triumphantly, and if need be, die gloriously. How can we suffer triumphantly? How can we die gloriously? Because God has empowered us with the Holy Spirit. He has given us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us, to be with us. No matter, no matter what happens in our life, He is always with us. There's a song by uh, a, a writer and, and singer by the name of Jeremy Camp called The Same Power. And the chorus goes like this. It says, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us, lives in us. That same power, God himself, the Holy Spirit lives in us. The question then comes that, you know, we know that God has empowered us. He has done that by giving us the Holy Spirit. So what are we doing with him? Are we taking advantage of the reality that God is with us? Or do we take him for granted? Do we not rely on him and allow him to guide us so we can live every day with purpose, so that, so that we can live life obediently and by God's word? 
only you can answer that question. Um, it reminds me, though, of a story I shared some time back with my church family in another message, but I want to share it here. There was a chief back in the 1800s, Crowfoot was his name, and he was over the Blackfoot Confederacy in the southern part of Alberta, Canada. And the Canadian Pacific Railroad came to him and asked him if they could cross the Blackfoot land from Medicine Hat, I believe it was, to Calgary. He allowed them to do that, and in return, as a thank you, they gave him this pass on their train and said, you can go anywhere, anytime you want to on Canadian Pacific Railroad. Well, the chief took that pass and he put it in a pouch and he hung it around his neck, um, but tradition says that he never once used it. Now, I'm not being critical of the chief uh, for not using it. Um, what I want us to see, though, is that's like us as Christians. God has given us so much. We have so much at our fingertips. This word, he's given us his spirit. He has saved us. He has created us to be faithful followers of him. And he enables us to do it. Are we taking advantage of that? Or do we take it for granted and try to do things in, on our own? And like I said earlier, we fail, we fall. We, we revert back to thinking, oh, I've got to be better, I've got to do good, I've got to satisfy God, instead of saying, no, God, I wanna do this your way, I'm gonna follow you, I'm gonna do what your word says. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness through knowing and trusting Jesus Christ. Will we live a life that brings glory to the very one who called us and saved us will we lean into him will we rest in his power and it is mighty and we look around at his creation it is an amazing amazing power that he he gives to us through jesus christ through the holy spirit it's my hope that we will live this way following the Holy Spirit's guidance, trusting Him, and that we're encouraged by what God has done through His grace, saving us and, and, and empowering us with His Spirit so that we can do what it is we need to do in this life and live every day with purpose, live obedient lives, live lives that, that bring glory to Him. He deserves it. He saved us. He has given us his spirit. So I hope that encourages you today. You're not going through this alone. Whatever it is you're facing, whatever uphill battle there is, whatever day-to-day -day things God has put in your path, he has enabled you to be able to go through those things. Now, I'm not saying it's always going to be easy. And I'm not saying you're not going to hit some hiccups. But he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's always with you. His spirit is with us always. And may we rejoice in that truth. Thank you again for being with me uh, this afternoon for our midweek reboot. I hope it's been an encouragement to you. I hope you'll also join us uh, online on Sunday mornings at 11 uh, on our YouTube channel, our First Baptist Church YouTube channel, and our fbcbonnersferry.org website. Um, that's where you can find midweek reboot and you can find our Sunday services. Um, thanks again for being uh, here with me today. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, I just want you to know I love you. I'm praying for you. I thank God that he has placed me here in North Idaho. And uh, I hope you're praying for me as well. Lord, we thank you so much for your precious word, for your spirit who enables us to get through life following you faithfully. Even when we fall, you're there to pick us up. I thank you, Lord, for my church family here friends and family for this community. I thank you, God, for your salvation and your love that is far greater than any circumstance I face. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.